so much for joining us today on Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Soreo. We are here today at the Palos Verdes Library District, where we will show you many things that you can add to your list of summer fun. Well, there's so much going on here at the library, especially for the younger set. I am now joined by Laura Henry, who is in charge of all things kids. Tell us what's going on this summer here at the library. Well, we have so much going on. We have something for every age group, starting with babies, okay. right on up through teenagers. Our baby programs we have um, at all three libraries where we sing, clap, bounce, and do a lot of fun rhymes and stories. That's open to ages 6 to 24 months, but anyone can come and they all have a really good time. Sounds kind of like a Bon Me and Me class. It's similar to that, okay. that's right. We're emphasizing um, reading, writing, singing, playing, and talking, which are the way children start to develop those critical early literacy skills. And how many times a week is that one? We do that three times a week at all, th so one at each library. Okay. Yeah. And then for the kids a little older? Yeah, we have regular story times. We do 14 story times a week. So pick a day and a time, and we probably have one for you. Okay. In addition to that, we have activities for the school-age children. And we do those at all three libraries as well. We have everything from uh, magicians to tomorrow we're doing a spy school obstacle course. So we do a lot of activities related to reading that are aimed at having children remember how fun it is to read. And of course, our whole summer reading activities about that where kids join, keep track of the amount of minutes they read, and they earn patches for what they do. When did things become so fun at the library? I don't remember this growing up. Well, for at least 17 years, <laughs> that's how long I've been here. No, it's, it's a trend in libraries to um, make sure that children know the importance of reading and their parents know the importance of reading and that it's fun. Just like you said, it's fun in summer. No tests, no book reports, no limitations on what the children can read. So they, they get revitalize that reading is fun and it's not just something I have to do for homework and I think that idea has been around a really long time and we really are emphasizing that here in PV. You know I noticed that there there are computers here in the library and kids are so into social media and being on the internet <clears throat> how do you sort of get them to get off of that and read a book is it just finding a favorite book what, what, what's the trick? Well actually what you said is exactly it find that favorite book that they like uh, all our libraries we have trained professional librarians who the children I love this they just come up and tell us what they're interested in and we will work until we find them the book that they want could be fiction could be nonfiction if they want to learn about coding or Pokemon or uh, a cool animal they saw at the zoo we really work with them so that they can find it and enjoy it and that automatically takes them to that place where <laughs> It's not just automation, it's something that is in print. Actually, what I have found is most children love to read print books. Mm -hmm. How do you um, decide who's going to come, like the magicians and all these fun people? Well, um, it's tough, actually. There's a lot of good performers, especially in Los Angeles. Uh, we go to um, workshops that library consortiums put on. We see little samples of some of the magicians, puppeteers. And we do a lot of what we call original programming, where the librarians themselves make up something. Something we did last year that we're repeating because it was so popular is life-size Candyland. So the children come, and they follow a game board throughout the library and it's just like Candyland. When you're thinking about putting together programs for kids, how long do they last? How does that sort of work? Well, the um, activity usually goes 30 to 45 minutes. Okay. That is usually for an age group of, say, age 4 to age 12. For older children, we might go longer, or maybe we'll do a drop-in program. So, um, in general, performers like a good 45 minutes. Sure. And we do have late arrivals, <laughs> and so sometimes it gives them a chance to come in and see part of it, too. Now, for the older kids, do the parents stay? Do they leave? How does that work? Well, we really encourage the parents to stay because it's a precious time with your child. You see what they're enjoying, what they're laughing at, and it gives you a, just a jumping off place to start conversations, to even with the littlest ones. And I mentioned talking with your child is a really important uh, tool to develop their early literacy skills. It holds true for older children as well and here you have 
45 minutes of something super fun your child did, it just creates all kinds of conversation opportunities. And I'm sure something where they look forward to coming back and getting more books and things like that. Yes, we, we hope that they come to something either to join our summer reading program or to see the magician or to play Candyland or to see story time and keep coming back. And to be honest, they do. Yeah, it's funny. I have a niece who's seven years old, and her, my thank goodness her mom is really good about taking them to the library, her kids. And they have read so many books, and it's just kind of a great thing to get kids back into the library. It's a really great thing. And at any age, reading all the time is so important. And it, for a young child, if they're walking around while you're reading, they're still hearing it. They're hearing the language, the rhythm, the enjoyment in your own voice. For the older children, like your um, niece, mm -hmm. she's developing skills that will hold her over the summer. If she doesn't read over the summer, she probably will lose some skills. And the more you read on a consistent basis, the easier your next grade is going to be. I had a teacher tell me just a couple of weeks ago, she can always tell who read books over the summer, not because they're smarter or they're advanced, but because they're comfortable and they're not afraid of the new grade. It really helps with that confidence, apparently. So what are some of the favorite books that kids like to read now? Are they old favorites? Are they new books? What are they? Um, I would say right now, Geronimo Stilton is one of our most popular. It's a... Um, Silly adventure story with uh, featuring a mouse. Very always, always good. Yeah. Um, a lot of times it aligns with movies. So Captain Underpants. We're all about Captain Underpants right now. I probably don't have any on the shelf. Um, for all ages, they tend to really like thoughtful books like Wonder or um, uh, Island of the Blue Dolphins. Things that take them out of themselves give them a sense of empathy about how someone else is feeling. A lot of things, if their teacher read it to them, they want to read it again. So uh, I see a lot of that too, a, a mixture. Do you find that kids tend to talk about them, talk about the books too with other children? They do. I always tell people, read what you want to read. You can ask the librarian and believe me, we have lots of great ideas. Your parents will have great ideas, but what are your friends reading? You know, borrow the book from them. Talk to them about it. That's, that's almost the best way to decide what to read, is what is your friend reading? You know? Now, where is the list or the schedule of things for people that want to come down, of course? Um, come to our webpage. It's www.pvld.org, and click on the kids icon, and that gives you a list of our activities, um, ideas for reading. It connects you to our online summer reading program. If the children want to do it online, they can. If they'd rather do it on paper, they can come to the library and get a chart to follow. So um, it starts at our webpage or just come right over to that desk and talk to us. Well, when we said there was a lot going on at the library, we were not kidding. We are now joined by Laura Ijizaka. Laura, Tell us what's going on for grown-ups here at the library today. We've got a lot of really cool stuff going on for adults. Um, in addition to uh, our you know, regular movies that we've got going on and um, the book sales, we've also got um, brand new things like our Book to Art Club. Um, and we've also got our summer music concert series. So I know some people are missing the spring uh, concerts that we used to do, but now we're doing a summer concert series, which started June 3rd, goes till August uh, 12th, and it's every other Saturday from 2 to 3. And tell us who comes in and sings. Um, so we've had the Kaleidoscope Trio, so they do classic to more contemporary stuff. So they do Bach to Beatles, I think is what they said. Okay. Um, and then this past Saturday, we had the Leslie Sharp Jazz Band. Um, in two weeks, we've got a barbershop quartet uh, hanging out with us over at Malaga Cove. Um, kind of doing like a 4th of July old-timey uh, event. Um, but we've also got some more international things. So we've got a Peruvian ensemble coming. Um, we've got uh, Indian ragas, which is like classical Indian music. Um, and then we've also got an artisan guitar ensemble coming. What kind of response are you getting from people coming to the events? It's excellent. People really enjoy it. Um, I think everyone's kind of liking that we're, we're mixing it up a little bit this time. So it's not one specific genre. We're going kind of all over the place. Um, and it's, you know, it's just fun. It's just a fun thing to do. It's free. So come on down. When did things change in the library? So many more events. <laughs> 
thoughts and things to do, do you think? I know everyone thinks that the library is a very quiet place, yeah, and we're over here like having having right. music concerts. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, maybe within the last five years, I think I've seen a big change and a big um, push to kind of try new things and, you know, what the community wants is what the community gets. So, you know, you want concerts, you want um, some more informational programs. We've got those for you. You've got all your book clubs still. So we're doing a lot of different things. Let's talk about some of the technology. I know that we see computers now in libraries. Um, can anybody use them? How does it work? Yeah, um, so the adult computers are on the other side of the library and um, you just need a library card to be able to hop on. Um, I believe you get two hours for free. And if you need more time, we're always flexible with that too. Yeah. And do you, do you see that they're busy all the time, I'm sure? You know, during the school year, they're extremely busy, um, especially after school hours. We've got a lot of teenagers that come in to use this, um, to do homework and things. But even now, with the summer starting, we're still seeing that they're pretty busy. Yeah. Now, do you also, you, you mentioned movies. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, one of our librarians, Joshua Peck, does a really stand-up job with the films. Um, so we've got um, our cine, I think it's a... Uh, Cinemonde, which is kind of more foreign uh, films. Okay. We've got our classics at noon, and then we've got our multiplex, which is kind of the bigger budget films. So we're doing La La Land this week. Yeah. So I know that's probably going to be a huge, uh, successful, and, and popular program. So get there early. Yeah. Um, and then next month for um, the multiplex, we're doing Hidden Figures. So that's another big one. Yeah. Now, are these free? They're all free. Mm -hmm. That is kind of amazing if yes. you think about it, because <laughs> all these programs anywhere else would cost money, but this is just free to the community. Yeah, uh, thanks to the Friends of the Library. A lot, everything we offer is free. Okay, and then tell us about some of the other programs that are going on. Sure. Um, so we've got a lot of really good informational programs, especially for our senior community. Um, so we've got things like Medicare 101 coming up, um, a savvy IRA program. Uh, we've also got one that's substance abuse for seniors. Um, so they're all informational workshops that everyone's welcome to attend. Um, they're specifically geared towards seniors, but anyone can come in. You know, that's a really, that's a huge one, I think, yeah. because um, you want to be in a comfortable environment exactly. and just to learn things that you actually need. Exactly. Um, and and kind of going off on that, um, we actually received a grant that we'll be work that we're working on this summer um, to be able to push out in the fall, um, which is all geared towards seniors and it's health and wellness programming. Um, it's called Boomers and Beyond, Aging Well at PVLD. Um, so we'll be partnering with a lot of organizations here on the Hill um, to bring forth programs like chair yoga, um, tai chi, nutritional classes, um, and some workshops with like American Alzheimer's Association and so forth. I was going to ask you if you work with some of the senior communities here to get the word out. We do, yeah. We, we work with um, different organizations on the peninsula to just kind of get the word out and see where, where we can all move together and work together to bring out what we need for the community. Now, I know it's also fun when authors come by. Yes. Uh, how uh, often does that happen and tell us who's coming? Actually, we've got a really big one coming up soon. It's Mary Ellis Monroe. Um, so she uh, has a series of best-selling kind of beach read uh, books coming and so um, she's got a new one coming out and I believe she's also got one that's being turned into a lifetime film yeah. uh, with Andy McDowell in it so um, she's gonna be coming to Malaga Cove uh, I believe in July I think they like coming up here um, you know it's it's different it's um, kind of off the beaten path a little bit um, and it's definitely this is a very reader heavy community so I think yeah. you know they enjoy being able to talk to people who are just excited about the books and know the books and, and know their work and it's it's a great environment now in addition to all all of the fun things you can do at the library, you can even do a little shopping. We set up this library gift shop to kind of look like a museum gift shop. We're able to sell things at a little bit lower price because of the low overhead. Uh, we do have some things by local artists and those are sold on consignment. Okay. And I know that um, all of you with the, who work in here are volunteers. Tell us about the program. Well, um, yes, we are all volunteers. We always need more volunteers because uh, the hours are not, uh, we'd like to be open more hours. Okay. And this is so much fun. You have so much fun stuff in the store. <laughs> it really is amazing stuff. And many of the things that we feature here are also featured in the National Gallery. Oh, wow, yeah, okay. In DC, yes. Yeah. So we try to model the merchandise after that. Very nice. It must be fun to work in here too. It is fun. You do get a chance to meet a lot of people and so we're usually friendly face and you get you get to know people's stories. Nice. So remember there's always something fun going on at the library and added bonus for those hot summer days. It's always cool inside the library. I'm Maria Sorreo and we'll see you next time.